one Maccabees is about then. I'm sure two Maccabees is about then, too. A lot of literary activity here in Egypt at this time. This is written in Egypt, obviously. I think Tumac was written in Egypt, too. Um, when I arrived in Egypt, I had already spent some time there. I found this work, and so on and so forth. So he, he says that he translated it or did something with it. So that gives you a date for this. Uh, here, for instance, line 14, to fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's a famous type saying. We hear those things quite often. I'm going to skip along here. There's the usual sort of, uh, you know, moral recommendations. You know, look, you can line 10 of chapter 4, to be a father to orphans, and as good as a husband to widows, you will become a son, of, is to be like a son of the Most High God. So you become, you can become like a son of the Most High God here, which is interesting when you think of someone who is like a son of the Most High God, adoption is sonship, if you want to call it that. You're not a real son, righteous behavior makes you a son. I'm not going to uh, mess around with this book. You can read it yourself. For instance, chapter 9, 9. You won't like these things. Women's beauty has led many astray. Never sit down with a married woman or sit at a table with her drinking wine. You know, that means you, people can't resist uh, these temptations. 10, 3, an uneducated king will ruin his people. When a man comes to die, 10, 11, his inheritance will be the creeping worms that doesn't yet have a doctrine of resurrection of the dead in this book. No resurrection of the dead. What other book, for instance, doesn't have a doctrine of resurrection of the dead yet? Huh? Job, we talked about that last time, right? Because if Job did have a doctrine of resurrection of the dead, it wouldn't be a problem. Because the question Job poses is, why do the good or the innocent suffer? Well, they're going to enjoy the afterlife. Ah, but if there's no, if there's no afterlife, what's the answer to the question? Job doesn't give one. He doesn't have one. He's just, you should you know, behave righteously anyway. What is the answer, basically? Should be a dutiful servant of God or whatever. Okay, so this is 40, 50 chapters of this kind of thing. Uh, you know, like chapter 19, 20. Wisdom consists entirely in fearing the Lord. Uh, my 24, wisdom speaks her own praises. It's like Athena, I come forth from the mouth of the Most High God. <coughs> Line 24, 3. Um, sin began with a woman. This is right out of Paul almost. Line uh, 25, 24, 33. The reason there are two numbers often is because it's in parallel columns. So the numbers get confused like that. Sin began with a woman, and thanks to her we all must die. Who's that? Eve. So Paul's original sin here is uh, is in this book. He, he must have read it or something. Uh, it's not a very big doctrine in it, but it shows how they were thinking at that time. Um, let's see. Um, moving along here to the important stuff here, which really comes in uh, chapter 44. You can read all the rest of it if you want. It's a very boring book. Now let us praise famous men. That is a very famous phrase in, uh, from even the Apocryphal Bible. But in the Hebrew, we found a Hebrew version of this book. It was found in the Cairo Geniza, the same place that the Damascus document. Uh, remember I told you that there was this Geniza in Cairo, what did I say a Geniza was? A 
place associated with synagogues where they buried or hid uh, dead manuscripts, manuscripts they weren't using anymore, but usually had the name of God in it. In the Geniza, though, it turned out there were vast amounts of marriage licenses, letters, everything else. And people have used it to produce a picture of the Mediterranean society in the Middle Ages because of such a vast treasure trove of documents. Geniza, G-E-N-I-Z-A-H. G-E-N-I-Z-A-H. Don't have the energy to turn around and write it. So this was found, a Hebrew version. We didn't know there was a Hebrew version. So um, the Hebrew is Anshe Hesed. Now let us praise Anshe Hesed. Anshe is the plural of man. So Anshe Hesed, men of piety, not famous men, not illustrious men, as it comes into the Greek, but Anshe Hesed. We should remember. Hesed is the root of Hasidim, which we're going to meet momentarily in Maccabees 1 and 2. The warriors of Judas Maccabee are called Hasidim, the pious ones. I think we'll find that the pious ones, as it's translated into English, I put two S's, as I told you, to make the parallel with Zadik. Hebrew is three letter roots, Z, V, K, H, S, D. Vowels don't matter. Put the vowels like that, it's a noun. Put the vowels like this, I am is a plural. Put the vowels like this, it's a uh, personal noun. It's a personal adjective. Sadiq, righteous one. Hasid, pious one. Hesed, piety. Zedek, righteousness. And you make your words up like that. You build them up out of the three letter roots. Arabic is the same. Aramaic is the same. These are called Semitic languages. Um, so I like the parallel with Sadiq. So therefore I go with a single pious one as a Hasid. But you'll often find it spelled with one S. I don't see why you would spell it. Maybe it came into the Greek with one S, but I don't see why you would spell it with one S if you spell Zadik with two Ds. You double the D, you double the S. That's how I see it, but maybe I'm, I'm just, you know, a jerk or something. Okay, so this is pious ones. Look who they are. Enoch, line 16. He was perfect. 